pork and veggie stir fry. You saw me uh, marinating the meat in the opening sequence. So I cut the pork into thin strips as you saw, marinated it in soy sauce and garlic and I'm going to set that aside while I do my vegetables now. So I've got a nice selection of vegetables. The only vegetables you really do need in this for sure is the onion. I've got three quarters of an onion there which I had lying around so I'm using it. And I've got two cloves of garlic. There's already garlic in there but a bit more garlic isn't going to hurt. I've got a zucchini or a courgette as we call it in the UK. I've got a nice red pepper which I'm going to cut up. I've got two little carrots and I've got a chunk of white cabbage. White cabbage is the base of this really um, and white cabbage makes makes an excellent um, I'll just strip that off makes an excellent stir fry vegetable and if you haven't been using it in the past give it a try you'll love it right let's get this uh, let's get this started so I'll get the cabbage out of the way first and I just want to cut it into strips pretty much like I've done with the uh, pork so and then I'll get that into my bowl, my prep bowl, courgette, easy enough, I just strip that lengthways, top and tail it, strip it lengthways, it wants to split on me but there you go, and then I cut it at a bias into slices like that and it'll make it cook around about the same time as everything else, that goes in my bowl. Same with that one. So that's there, into the bowl. Right, peppers, I've got away with peppers, this one. Top it, tail it. Go down, cut through the pith on each side like that. And down like that. And then you end up with that piece entirely out of the way. Then, because I'm cutting into strips, out of the way that can go in my waist and then I'll just chop these bits up that's the peppers done they go in my bowl carrots again um, these are small enough to just go on the bias one another one another trick I do with carrots is I split it down the middle like that and then cut it on the bias again so you end up with little little smiles carrot smiles we all need to smile don't we boys and girls especially now got a smile and we smile because it's better than the alternative like life So onions are easy to cut, I just, once they're halved that way, I just cut them down that way and then you end up with nice slices for this type of stir fry. They can go in, that's all cooking at the same time. And last but not least, I'll just show you my little trick with garlic. I like to go down there, just cut the end off like that, give it a whack and then it peels off quite easily like that same with that one show you again cut down the end give it a little whack and it peels off quite easily like that and then that one's got a bit of darkness on it so we cut that out and then I can just roughly chop that and that's all ready now all right, I'm going to make up a slurry of cornstarch, corn flour. I'm going to use um, one, one and a bit teaspoons of that, and got my vegetables from the fridge, and I've got my marinated meat. Now, what I want to do with that is a little trick a Chinese friend of mine taught me years and years ago. 
in Hong Kong and that is to put on some starch about just over a teaspoon of starch on the meat and then rub that into the meat and what that does it protects the, the texture of the meat as it cooks, as it stir fries. So you want to mix it in fairly well into your marinated meat and that really smells great with that uh, smells great already with that garlic and soy sauce marinade so that's now ready to go and I'll loosen it up a little bit so it fries quickly and then we'll show you the frying process first I want to mix this up with a little bit of water just to make a slurry that's all you need and that will help to thicken the stir fry sauce so I'll put that to one side and then use it when we fry all right the trick here is to get yourself either a wok or a saucepan with a tight fitting lid uh, this one's got a vent hole but it doesn't really matter for this process and I'll show you the reason for having a, a lid uh, a little later on so ideally either a wok or a fricassee pan with a nice uh, lid now I'm just going to get that super hot because for stir frying you want it really really hot almost dangerously hot okay that's coming up to heat nicely I want to get some oil in there about a tablespoon or so and then I want to get in my meat so in goes the meat and we get that spread out get it frying make sure you get all the marinade in with it get the meat spread out so it fries quick and the advantage of cutting into small strips like that is it's really fast so it's really fast to cook. So get it, get the pan hot, get the oil hot, and then put in your meat. And then we'll just stir and fry that. It's already smelling great in this kitchen. Wonderful. Just keep that moving now. As with a lot of stir fries, Cantonese cooking, it depends mainly on the quality of your preparation. So really, it's, it's all in the prep. There's very little cooking involved. And the, the idea of cooking in woks goes back a long time in Chinese history. And uh, to, to a time when people couldn't afford much fuel or they really, they were pulling their resources in the village and and they only had um, a very limited time on the heat, on the flame, so that they would prep all their vegetables and all their, their meat, and then they would have it all ready to go. And then when the family slot, time slot came on the, on the actual heat itself, they could cook it in something like under three minutes. And that would have been the limit that each family had on the heat so that's a bit of anecdote behind it so once the um, once the meat's starting to look done and you'll see there's a fun building up on the bottom don't worry about that just yet what we do now is we're getting all the veg that's everything including the garlic and the onions that goes into the pot and you'll see it's quite a lot but it will go down a little bit and then you carefully stir and fry that, trying to keep it all in the pan. But don't worry about that, it will, it will eventually cook down a little bit. But you want to keep some crunch in those lovely vegetables. You can already see what a beautifully presented dish this is going to be. It will present absolutely gorgeous on serving bowls or on a on a plate 
and you want to just stir to make sure that everything gets coated in that delicious oil because that's where it's at with this my friends keep it stirring now look at the bottom of the pan you'll see the fond is starting to brown and darken So once you're happy that everything's had a coating of the oil, what you want to do is get a little bit of liquid into that. So I'm going to pour in, what's that, about a cup of water. And then you'll hear it sizzle as it hits the pan. And this time, this is the time we get on our, our lid. Let me just scrape that off. Waste not want that. And then... We leave the lid on there now for three minutes and let that steam. Okay, after three minutes we can lift the lid and have a quick look. Look on the bottom. We still see a little bit of the fond on the bottom, but don't worry about that. We've got a way of dealing with that because we don't want to lose all that lovely flavour. And you'll see the vegetables have started to relax a little bit, but they've still kept their crunch. So into that I'm going to put in... A about a tablespoon, a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm using two different kinds because I like the uh, I like the uh, flavour contrast. Um, I'm, but don't use dark soy sauce at this stage. All right, you just want to use a light soy sauce. And I want to put in some about a tablespoon again of oyster sauce. I'm using a good quality oyster sauce. This one's Thai a Thai oyster sauce. I'm using about a tablespoon of that, maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to just stir that in now. And that's steaming away nicely. Just steam it in to mix those flavourings in. Just stir it in, I mean, to mix in those flavours. And then we'll put the lid on for another minute or so. About two minutes. Okay my friends, lift the lid, see where we are. So we're at that stage now where all the vegetables are relaxed but they've still got some nice crunch in them. Now you can decide how much crunch you want to allow in your vegetables. So you can do a little taste test. And what I'll do now is I'll have a little taste test of that sauce. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Use a little more soy sauce. So, what's that all together? About two tablespoons, maybe a little bit more of light soy sauce. And at this stage, I'm going to add a little bit of dark soy sauce. So, I'm going to add a scant teaspoon of dark soy sauce and you'll see why because it's quite quite strong so I'm going to put in a teaspoon of dark soy and then just drop that in there just a little off the spoon and then stir that in and you'll see how that changes the colour of the sauce it looks a little insipid to start with but then as soon as you work around the dark soy sauce and that boys and girls is colouring from just one teaspoon of Chinese dark soy sauce I'll show you the brand and so it acts like a gravy browning very much like a gravy browning in fact you can use dark soy sauce as gravy browning because it doesn't offer very much in terms of flavour but it certainly does in terms of colour and that version is uh, Superior dark soy sauce, and that's the Pearl River Bridge brand, the Chinese brand. Okay, we're at that stage now where it's time to start thinking about thickening the sauce. But before we thicken it, I like it a bit more saucy than that. I don't know about you, because we're having that with some of that nice Jubilee rice. And you'll see that in the finished picture. If you want me to put up a video of the Jubilee rice, uh, let's see your comments below. So first of all, I want to get some liquid into that. So I'm going to put in 
about a cup full. So that goes up to about that level, as you see. And then into that, I'm going to put, first of all, I'm going to put about two thirds of this in, because I don't know how thick it's going to turn out. And that's the corn starch, which I, uh, or the corn flour as we call it in Britain, which I've mixed with a bit of water. You can use potato starch, you can use tapioca starch, whatever you've got to hand, but uh, the fine powder starches work the best. And corn flour is readily available to me here in the United Kingdom. And it's an excellent medium for thickening soups and stews. I think I'm happy to go with that being a little bit thicker than that. So I'm going to put in the rest of my slurry. And mix that down. Mix it all in very well because you don't want thick and thin bits or... You don't want it to turn uh, too thick in parts and then no thickness at all in others so get it all mixed in rather well. So we've got nice crunchy vegetables, we've got delicious cooked marinated pork and you can do this with chicken, you can do it with um, turkey meat if you don't eat pork for any reason. It's good with chicken or, uh, or turkey meat, it's excellent in fact. and. Uh, in fact, I've actually done a video of a stir fry with turkey meat somewhere. Let's, um, I'll put that up in the links above the video. So now I can turn the heat off that. Now it's come back to the boil. And then just allow that to rest. One last little touch I like to give it, just before I serve it up, is a little drizzle of organic toasted sesame seed oil and uh, you don't need a lot of this because it's got quite a powerful flavour so I'm going to put in two teaspoons of that just two that should do it and then we'll stir that in the only other thing I would give that a garnish of just before I serve it is some um, finely chopped spring onions but I don't have any and I can't get any at the moment so We'll just have to make do with it as it is. If you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to follow my channel please subscribe and be sure to click the bell icon to receive notification of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.